going on doll fans it is your boy Dylan and I'm here to make a video uh, today um, you know I made a couple videos recently uh, more around the draft and you know if you guys watch those videos one you know that I'm back and I am making content again but also you should know that you know I'm doing it a little bit more casually than I was before um, it's just gonna be kind of like you know a side little fun project that I do um, you know in my spare time I've got work and other things that obviously take up a lot of my time so I'm just gonna make videos here and there whenever I see fit I probably will be doing streams for the games um, and stuff like that um, you know major events so you know I'll do it for you know the draft next year and for you know any um, games that I watch and stuff like that but other than that I probably I wouldn't expect there to be any real live streams and then other than that you know the videos that I make will just be you know here and there I'm not gonna make a super lot I'm not gonna you know be doing like you know cra I mean I probably will do videos for like you know some post game analysis stuff but I, I'm not sure if I'm really gonna go super deep into it I may just make you know quick videos on what I thought of the game, what I expected and stuff like that. And then, you know, pre, uh, before the games, you know, who I expect to win and stuff like that. And just kind of give you my thoughts. Probably won't do a lot of like stats and stuff like that, but who knows? I haven't decided on that quite yet, but either way I am making videos again. Um, and it is just going to be kind of like one of my little side passion projects that I do. I'm not really, you know, um, I'm not really doing what I was doing before where I was trying to like really make my stream into a monetized channel, um, you know, and then make it like my job. If ever it got to that point where I got to make some money from it, then it would be cool. But it's just going to be a fun passion project for me. So anyway, with all that, I hope you guys, you know, do enjoy my content and the things that I have to say. Um, so for today's video, I am going to be talking about the schedule a little bit. I haven't even really looked at the schedule yet. Um, I just peeked at it very briefly, or at least the, the first couple games when I pulled it up on my browser, uh, just because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys too. I'm going to have it up here in just a minute. Um, matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and pull it up so we can start. And this is straight from MiamiDolphins.com for their 2023 regular season. So we're going to go through it, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts, just brief brief thoughts, you know, and whether I think we should win and so on and so forth. But this is my first time looking at it, so, you know, you'll kind of get my first impressions and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, real quick, um, before we do that, though, I did that. I'm wearing for the first time my Tua jersey. I just bought, I, I have a number of jerseys, but like they're all old jerseys. Like I have a Devontae Parker, a Jarvis Landry, a Ryan Tannehill, a No Sean Moreno jersey. I have a really old Ricky Williams jersey. Like I have a handful of jerseys, but they're all old, right? And none of those players are on the Dolphins anymore. So I had to update my, my jersey collection and who better to start my updating with than with Tua? So I got a white Tua Tunga Vailoa jersey. So I'm rocking that in this video. First time you get to see me with that. And also, too, if you notice in my background, on this side, I have my hat collection, which is my uh, um, uh, the draft hats, the Miami Dolphin draft hats. And I've been collecting them since 2015. So it's nine years now. And if you look, uh, this one right here. That's 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 2021, 2022, and 2023. And then obviously, so I have uh, on those shelves, I have room for three more, three more years, and then I'll need a new shelf. But anyway, so I got my hat collection up there too, so you guys can see that, um, which I think is pretty cool. And obviously, I have a, a nice little background going on too with my dolphin stuff, so and uh, I'll probably be able to fit some more stuff in later. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get to the actual topic of this video because I do want to go through this a little bit and just kind of see what's going on, see who we're playing because, again, I haven't actually looked at it yet. Um, so for the 2023 season, it looks like we start off at the Chargers. That's interesting. So that's a game actually out here that I could potentially go to if I wanted. But... Um, not that I care to, you know, really get into it, but I am not like most people. Um, 
I still recognize the fact that COVID is a serious and major virus, whether you're vaccinated or not, it's still causing immense problems in you know the world and especially in this country. We're just pretending that as a whole, we're just pretending that it doesn't and most people just care to go about their business. They wanna be able to attend games. They wanna be able to go out to eat. They wanna to go to the movie theaters. You know, and then obviously from a capitalist, you know, money driven perspective, well, everybody's got to work and the economy just has to keep moving on. Right. So those things in the world that we live in tend to take priority over, you know, what's right, um, what's correct, what's efficient, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So for me, I really don't go out uh, into public much anymore these days. Uh, and when I do, I most certainly wear a mask. So if I was to go to a game, I would certainly have a mask on and I do have a Dolphins mask if I were to choose to do that. Who knows though? I mean, week one, it's the first game of the season and it's against the Chargers. So that's obviously going to be out here. Um, we'll see how things are going. That's going to be Sunday, September 10th. Uh, at 425 p.m. Eastern so that means it's going to be a one o'clock game for because I obviously I live out here on the west coast uh, and it's being played in Los Angeles so because it's at Chargers so week one we're at the Chargers I don't know maybe I'll go to it it'll it should I would think it would be a fun game I mean the Chargers you know it, obviously the big deal with the Chargers over the past few years has been centered around Justin Herbert and, you know, of course, there's the, the narratives of Herbert versus Tua, whatever. I don't care about any of that. Um, I think that they'll probably both be really good players in league um, for the duration of their, their careers. I think Tua will probably actually end up having the better overall career when it's said and done, if I'm being honest, as long as the Dolphins continue on the path that they've been on this year and last year. Everything that damn near, I mean, if you guys have seen my past content, you would know that at least the in recent memory, the things that the Dolphins have been doing, in my opinion, have not been very good. So, uh, but I do like a lot of. I, I don't agree with everything that has occurred over the past two years, but I do actually, for the first time, you know, pretty much since I be, became a Dolphins fan, you know, when I was much much younger. Um, for the first time, really, I feel like we're actually like legitimately headed in the right direction. So I am excited for this. I do think it would be a good game. It, it probably would be, a, you know, stand to be a really good kickoff game for the season. Um, so again, maybe I will go. We will see about that. But I think it'll be tough. I don't think the Chargers are just going to be a pushover. Obviously, that's going to be a home game for them. It's an away game for us. So we're going to have to travel cross country from Florida all the way to LA. So all of that has to take, be taken into consideration. I'm still not super like confident in our offensive line, although they have brought in some guys. Uh, who was it? Uh, Isaiah Wynn, I think is the, the latest addition that they just did or that they just made. So, and then, you know, they got a, an offensive tackle in the draft. I think that they're certainly better right now uh, in that regard than they were prior to the draft. Um, but I still have my concerns there. Otherwise, I do think that the offense is on the right track and under Mike McDaniel and with the weapons we have and with Tua, that's really going to start to shine more and more. And I think we could really have a top offense in the league. And last year, when Tua was in the game, we did have one of the best offenses in the league. So I think that that should and could and will continue. Provided they do, at least, at the very least, they need to make improvements on the offensive line. I think that Connor Williams, Armstead, and Robert Hunt were all fine last year, right? Uh, it's just the Eichenberg and the Jackson positions that are really my biggest concern. And I'm always build through the trenches first and foremost kind of guy anyway. I think that the trenches are more important than your running backs, your wide receivers, and yes, your quarterback. So... If you don't have a good offensive line, then your quarterback is going to have problems. Anyway, so I think it'll be a tough game, but I do think it's a, a certainly a winnable game. Let's just say this: I don't think that they're really and just and this uh, this is with me not even having looked at the rest of the schedule yet. This is just based off of um, the teams in the league, right? Uh, overall, and obviously we're going to have to play the AFC more because they're our conference. Obviously, we play our division rivals twice a year. But I don't think 
Right now, where the Dolphins are, I still think that we have a ton of work. The defense, by the way, I think is going to be sick nasty. So I really do think that we are in a position to have a top offense and defense. I think both units could be top 15. I think that they could both be top 10. And I think that they both have the potential to be in the top five. We'll have to wait and see how all that plays out, of course, bringing in Jalen Ramsey. Um, is a huge deal. Again, I'm not usually one, one of those kind of guys that trades away a whole bunch of future capital uh, and, and has to sign a player to a massive contract. Um, but if they do it right, and, and generally speaking in the Dolphins history, at least as far as when I've been a Dolphins fan, those big time trades and those big blockbuster deals don't tend to work out for the Dolphins. I think they've been smarter with it recently, and I think that they've they've done it a lot better. Um, so, you know, I think that there's a lot less chance of it being a complete flub like in the past. Um, but I think what they're building is great. And with Vic Fangio running it, I think that, I mean, the, the biggest weakness I think that we have on our defense is probably our linebackers. I think our secondary is going to be phenomenal. I think our defensive line is going to be phenomenal. And I think our linebackers should at least be above average. So I And with Vic Fangio running that, that unit, I think we're going to be pretty nasty. So again, I think both units have the ability to be in top five. Now, the Chargers game, it's a game we certainly could lose. That game could go either way. I would probably say right now I lean a little bit towards that we would win the game. Next game, uh, this I think, it's funny that I'm going to say this too because obviously this has not been the case uh, until Tom Brady left the Patriots. But I think that's a pretty easily winnable game against the Patriots. So I'm going to say that um, we could go either way against the Chargers, but I'm leaning towards a win. The Patriots in week two should be a pretty easy win, and that's a way, which means when they come to play us at the end of the season, they're going to have to come down to Florida, which means we at least don't have to play them in the cold, which would give them the the a slight advantage. Um, not that it would be a big advantage, but it would be a, a slight advantage in that regard. So I think that we should probably, and I haven't even seen when we play them again, but I would say we should probably pretty easily sweep the Patriots. Um, but anyway, so let's say right now that's two wins. Denver Broncos, um, that's a, our first home game of the season. Uh, I'd say that's probably a win. The Bills is definitely a game that we could lose and this is going to be the first one of the year but it's and it's early on and we play them so we're going to get the same situation like with the patriots we won't have to play them in buffalo towards the end of the year so that actually increases our our odds of being able to sweep them but let's say we end up just splitting with the bills i think we'll probably sweep the patriots sweep the jets um aaron Rodgers doesn't super scare me although i do think that the jets are um, doing things a lot better when it comes to building their team. I think that they do have a lot of potential on both the offense and defense. I think that they will be the third team in the division. I think that the Patriots are going to slump down to number four and probably stick there for a little while. I think the the Jets are going to start getting into a position where they're going to be a solid number three in the division this year, but they could start over the next year or two, start really competing for maybe that number two spot. Obviously, we'll have to see what the Patriots do over the next few years, but this is just kind of where I see it right now. And right now, I think that the Bills and the Dolphins are going to be battling it out for the number one, number two spots. I think both the Bills and Dolphins will make it to the playoffs this year. Um, but anyway, so let's say we split with the Bills since this is the one where we play them, even though, even though you know, playing them earlier in the year in Buffalo does definitely help us out and them having to come down to play us in the back end of the year. I'm just going to say that they'll win that game and we'll win when they come down to Hard Rock. Just this is kind of like an early thing or whatever. And this is just my first impressions. Although again, I do think especially with us playing in Buffalo at the beginning of the year and them coming down to us at the end of the year, there is a chance we actually could even sweep the Bills. But if we sweep our entire division, then we better have like 13, 14 wins at the end of the season and be like, you know, 
the number one seed in the AFC or some shit like that. So if we have that kind of a good year, then we definitely better be the number one seed and shit. Um, anyway, so the Giants, I think that's a win. Panthers, that should be a win. The following, now the Eagles, that'll be a tough game. Uh, let's just call it a loss for right now. I think that's a phenomenal team, and they got a lot better in the draft. Obviously, they went to the Super Bowl this past year, um, and I think that they have a bright future. And obviously, we can't win them all. I'd love to say that we could, but let's say, so right now, let's say I have two losses, right? Even though I do think the Chargers could go either way, I'm going to call that a win for right now. So win against Chargers, win against Patriots, win against Broncos. Let's say that the Bills win this one, so that'll be our first loss in week four. Giants, we win. Panthers, we win. Philly, Philly, let's say, and that's also an away game for us, so we're going to have to play in their stadium. So let's say that's our second loss. Oh, that's a primetime game, though, too, 8.20 p.m. Eastern. Uh, is that our first primetime game of the year? Oh, no, no. Our game against the Patriots in week two is also primetime. So those are two primetime, and that's a Sunday game. And honestly, the first game of the year, a 4.25, um, that's the, the middle slots for that so you know pretty good slots uh for our games but you know the nfl sees us as a as an up-and-coming rising team at this point anyway so we play the patriots again in week eight so let's say that's another win the chiefs that's another tough team let's say let's say that's a loss and we also play in uh arrowhead stadium now I would love for us to win that game in part because there is obviously the narrative of Tyree Kill going back and blah, blah, blah. And it's against the Chief. It's against the tough team. But, and then our, our, our buys in week 10. Okay, that's not bad. I actually like that. That's kind of in the middle of the year. That's a solid time for a buy. And it'll be after we've played a few of the tough teams already. Philly, KC, Chargers are tougher, right? So Buffalo. Um, but yeah, so let's say... Through up to the bye, we will have three losses. So that'll be six and three. Up when we get to the bye week, right now my initial prediction will be six and three. Now we definitely absolutely could beat the Chiefs. I'm not saying we're going to lose against the Chiefs or the Bills when we go up to play them um, or whatever, but they will be tough games and they certainly could, or Philly, we could beat Philly, sure. Um, but again, I mean, I'm just trying to be reasonable because you can't win them all, and those are some of the better teams in the league. Vegas, the Vegas Raiders, I'd say that's a win. Jets, like I said, I do think we're going to sweep them, so that's a win. Commanders, I think, would be a win. Titans, uh, that I think that'll be an interesting game. They are a team that I root for on the side if we're not playing them. Obviously, I think, uh, or obviously when we're playing them, I'm rooting for us always and forever. Um, but I do like to root for the Titans because um, I like Mike Vrabel. I like what he has done with that team overall. I am actually a Tannehill fan. I think that Miami just completely did him wrong. I think the Miami fan base shits on him for absolutely no, no reason. I think his career since going to the Titans has been great, uh, especially compared to what his career was here. But his career with the Dolphins could have been so much better if we just gave him an offensive line and weapons and a good defense and so on and so forth. I think Tua's got, uh, got it. Now, Tua's first couple years with this team, especially because of Brian Flores, was very tumultuous to say the least. But I think that since then, in the in, you know going into second year of Mike McDaniel and whatnot, I think that they are definitely doing things a lot better. But let's say that's a win, so we still have only three losses, win against the Jets, win against the Cowboys, Ravens, and Bills again. Uh, I mean, let's say we lose to the Ravens. That's in Buffalo, so that is another tough game. Um, I mean, Cowboys could be a tough game. Uh, you know, obviously the Patriots and the Jets, they're, they're division rivals, so they always play you tough. I mean, Tennessee is not going to be just a rollover, but let's say... So let's say I said we lose against the Ravens, that's four. And then let me just add one in, you know, a surprise loss. Maybe the Titans or the Chargers. Let's say that's five losses. So that should have us right now at 12 and five uh, on the season after I go through this. And this is uh, the Cowboy game is another midday game. 
Otherwise, oh, and the Tennessee game is also a prime time. I mean, that's Monday. That's a Monday game. So that's three prime time games, TBD against the Bills at the end. And they did that, of course, because I guarantee, and not only with the TBD uh, as far as, you know, when and where it's going to be played and stuff like that, but they put this game at the very end of the season because they, at least everybody thinks that the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins are going to be battling it out to the very end. And they think, most people think that we're going to be two of the better teams in the AFC, which could also have implications for the number one seed. Um, anyway, so let's see. Do we have, so we have what, three prime time? Oh, we have a game on Friday against the Jets at 3 p.m. So is that kind of a prime time game? Well, we have at least three prime time games. Oh, oh, right, because don't we play the Chiefs? Oh, we play them in Germany, don't we? Isn't that this game, and that's why it's so early? That means it's 6.30 in the morning for me. I got to be up stupid early for that game. Uh, anyway, it'll be fun, though. It's going to be good. It's a primetime game against... Uh, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me just real quick before I wrap this up. So we have... I'll, I'll call these ones semi prime time. So one semi, one prime time. Then we have two prime times, one semi. I mean, let's call this technically is a prime time game, the Germany, the away game. So that's like three and then one semi. I guess if you really want to, you could do it as a semi prime time game, especially because that's like stupid early in the morning for me. I don't know if we would consider this one a prime time, but so far, fine. Let's just lump them all in together of prime time and semi prime time. We've got four, five. This one would make five, six, seven. We have seven games at least. Wow. I mean, we're not used to that as Dolphins fans because, uh, you know, we haven't been good for a while. So, And they don't usually really do that with good teams, give us a bunch of primetime games. But we got at least like three or four games. And, I mean, the, the Buffalo Bills game at the end of the season will likely be a primetime game. So that's like eight games on the year. That's like half our schedule that will either be played in uh, primetime and, for like legit prime time, meaning either the Sunday night game, Monday or Thursday. We didn't have any Thursday night games. We just have the one Monday and we have a couple for sure Sunday night games. And then a couple of the semi prime time games. We have like two that are Sunday afternoon games, the 425 Eastern slot. And then we have the one game that's against the Jets on Friday. So that's kind of, and then we have the one game against the Chiefs, that is, I believe, in London, or I mean, not London, Germany, excuse me, uh, which I believe also counts as technically, I think that's technically a prime time, but I would say you could leave it in the semi prime time just because that shit is stupid early in the morning. It's 9.30 in the morning Eastern, but it's 6.30 in the morning for me and for all of us on the West Coast. And if you're in Hawaii, Jesus Christ, you're watching it like, Would that technically be Saturday night? I think that would be on Saturday night then for people in Hawaii. Uh, how many hours is it? I mean, as long as it's like, whatever. Anyway, that's crazy. That's super early in the morning. But we got a bunch of primetime games, which is really cool. So I'm pumped for that. And I am probably going to expand my jersey collection a little bit more during the season. I want a Javon Holland jersey. I've been wanting... Um, a Xavier Howard jersey for a while, but I want to get Xavier Howard jersey, Xavier Howard's jersey in the throwback. I really want to throwback Xavier Howard jersey. I would like to get a Dolphin, a, a Dolphin Rams jersey. I mean, a, a Ramsey Dolphins jersey. Uh, Tyree Kill while he's a Dolphin. Um, who knows? I mean, jerseys are expensive. They're like $150, $200 a piece, depending on which ones you get. So, and I usually get the, the authentic fucking you know, full one. So when I bought this one, it was 200 fucking bucks. But anyway, things are on the up and up for me overall. And I may be able to afford to get a couple jerseys throughout the year. So we'll see how it plays out. But um, I'm sure I'll get at least one more. Uh, but yeah, anyway, 
I am going to wrap that up. It's about 25 minutes worth of me talking and, and you know, giving my opinions on, on stuff. So, you know, it's just kind of a preliminary thing. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see how training camp goes. And by the way, obviously, for the past couple years, right, like, you know, up until I made those videos around the draft or during the draft, I hadn't made a video for about two years, um, maybe even longer than that. So, you know, and, and the reason for that is because, you know, my life has been tumultuous to say the least and as a lot of stuff's been going on and, and you know even now that things are looking up I am still you know really busy I'm working a lot and everything like that and whatever but um you know I'm in a better place now and and you know things are looking up for me so I am I'm hoping to be able to you know continue making content now Part of you know what I'm getting at is is over the past couple years I haven't been like super following the team so I'm just I'm you know I'm diving back in although it is going to be somewhat casual certainly a bit more casual than what I was doing things before but you know we'll see how things play out as of right now I'm thinking that 12 and 5 is probably a good record for the Dolphins just as a quick glance through the the um, the schedule now we could certainly win, you know, games against Baltimore, the Chiefs, the Eagles, right? The Chargers. These are teams that I would think we could potentially get losses. The Bills, right? Those are teams and games where we could potentially sustain losses. But we could also beat every single team on the the schedule. Now, do I think we're gonna go 17 and 0? No, I don't. That would be amazing. I would love to see it, certainly in my lifetime, because I never got to see the the undefeated team that actually occurred. I wasn't even born yet. It was 17 years before I was even born. I was born in 89. So, you know, would that be awesome? Yes, but I would think that we're going to take some losses. So I'm going to have us right now at 12 and 5. That'll probably be roughly where I end up leaving it because, again, the losses that I think we're going to take are against the best teams. And I think that we are actually starting to get... Now, the team has a lot more work to do, but I think that for the first time in years and years, we are starting to get to the point where we are uh, in a position where we could be ranked with the best teams, certainly in our conference, if not the entire league. Um, now, we'll have to wait and see if they're able to sustain that for the years to come, but I think in the here and now, today, with you know all of the information and data we have at hand i think that we are certainly one of the better teams in the league and the afc and stuff like that so i think that you know most of the games that we play this year should be winnable and i would think that 12 games should probably be about our floor i mean i would say 10 games would be our absolute absolute floor if we lost more um I mean, if we didn't win 10 games, that would be kind of a disappointment. I'm not going to lie. Not just because of last year and even some of the years before that with Brian Flores' teams, you know, winning 10 games a couple years or, or one of the years or whatever and, and going to the playoffs, whatnot, and so on and so forth. But just because I actually think that this organization is doing things a lot better with how they're, you know, I mean, it's still not exactly how I would do things, and I don't agree with everything, but I think that they're legit legitimately on the right track. All right, anyway, that is going to wrap it up because the little extra little bits there I got here the past couple minutes has now brought my video up to about 30 minutes. Um, and I really have nothing else to say, so I'm not going to just drone on. I'm not going to, you know, make this video any longer than it needs to be. I have said what I need to say and so that's where it is but like I said I am really excited I am going to be doing streams um for um you know games and maybe I'll start to uh you know jumping in on reasons channel again just to chop it up with the guys and and with the other fans and so on and so forth uh like after games I'm not going to be doing it a, a lot because I like I said I have a lot of other things going on with work and other things going on in my life but um but I will try and get back into that community too as well, not just getting back to making content and stuff. So because I do want to be able to interact with you guys and and even though I'm not really like pushing my channel to like grow super huge like Dougley Do Wrong or or Reason or or any of those other guys, right? And I'm not necessarily pushing for it to be monetized. If that happened, that would be great. But my goal is just to have fun with it. Um 
and and do it as a passion thing because it's it's I love my dolphins and I actually really do enjoy making content but I do also want to be able to engage at least somewhat with the community so I probably will start jumping in on some of reason shows the the open panels that he does probably most notably when it comes to the games I'll probably maybe get on like the pre-game panels and the post game panels or maybe just the post game panel um uh, probably at least the pro post game panel maybe sometimes also the pre game panel we'll see but anyway all of that's in the works let me get up out of here hope you guys do enjoy my content and the things that i have to say and i hope you guys enjoy the fact that i'm back and i you know i just want to be embraced with my in my community you know we don't always have to agree and i know a lot of the dolphins fan base and a lot of the dolphins community has kind of hated on me the past few years because i said things that were not popular um, but the irony of that is, is that a lot of what I have, you know, said and believed the past few years, a lot of Dolphins fans now believe because of how everything played out with Brian Flores and everything. And I turned out to be true on a lot of that stuff. So hopefully I, I can get at least a little bit of credit for the things I was right about in that regard. But hopefully at least people can, you know, see that I'm not just, I wasn't just hating on the team. I was just being real and saying things how I see it. Um, and trying to be as objective as I possibly could. And I'm going to be that way for the rest of my life as a content creator. So I do hope you guys enjoy what I have to say, the content create and my viewpoint and my perspective. If you do, you know, make sure you follow me, hit the like button, all that good stuff. You know, again, I'm not really going to be super promoting it uh, because it's just a passion project and it doesn't necessarily need to become a business for me. But if you do, guys do like my content, make sure you subscribe and hit the uh, hit the like button on the videos and all that stuff. It would help me grow, and I certainly would like to. Um, I would like my channel to grow and to get better, bigger, even if you know it's only a little bit here and there. So anyway, with that, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you guys have a great day, and let's have a wonderful season. Training camp and everything is is going on, and and you know we're really getting into the off season program and stuff like that. So let's see how all that plays out. I'm pumped up for the year, and let's do it, man. Like I said, 12 wins I think should be our minimum. Absolute min minimum would be would be 10. But I think we just after going through the the schedule there real quick, I think we should be able to make it to at least 12. We should definitely be able to compete within our own division and have a really good chance of winning the division. And then depending on how things go, man, obviously we need to stay healthy and whatnot too. But depending on how things go, I think that there is at least a reasonable probability that the Dolphins could make it as the number one seed. They could make it to the AFC Championship game and maybe, just maybe, even make it to the Super Bowl. So on that note, let me get the F out of here. Fins up all day, every day. I love you guys, and I will see you soon. Miami wins it.